Scientists have suggested that the James Webb Space Telescope has detected a previously unidentified object in the far reaches of the universe. The powerful telescope has the ability to peer deeper into the cosmos than any of its predecessors, allowing it to make stunning discoveries on a regular basis. Let's take a closer look. The ingredients for life are spread throughout the universe. While Earth is the only known place in the universe with life, detecting life beyond Earth is a major goal of modern astronomy and planetary science. Thanks in large part to next-generation telescopes like the James Webb Space Telescope, researchers will soon be able to measure the chemical makeup of atmospheres of planets around other suns. The hope is that one or more of these planets will have a chemical signature of life. Life might exist in the solar system where there is liquid water, like the subsurface aquifers on Mars or in the oceans of Jupiter's moon Europa. However, searching for life in these places is incredibly difficult, as they are hard to reach and detecting life would require sending a probe to return physical samples. Many astronomers believe there's a good chance that life exists on planets orbiting other stars and that may be where life will first be found. Theoretical calculations suggest that there are around 300 million potentially habitable planets in the Milky Way galaxy alone, and several habitable Earth-sized planets within only 30 light-years of Earth, essentially humanity's galactic neighbors. So far, astronomers have discovered over 5,000 exoplanets, including hundreds of potentially habitable ones, using indirect methods that measure how a planet affects its nearby star. These measurements can give astronomers information on the mass and size of an exoplanet, but not much else. To detect life on a distant planet, astrobiologists will study starlight that has interacted with a planet's surface or atmosphere. If the atmosphere or surface was transformed by life, the light may carry a clue called a biosignature. For the first half of its existence, Earth sported an atmosphere without oxygen, even though it hosted simple, single-celled life. Earth's biosignature was very faint during this early era. That changed abruptly 2.4 billion years ago when a new family of algae evolved. The algae used a process of photosynthesis that produces free oxygen, oxygen that isn't chemically bonded to any other element. From that time on, Earth's oxygen-filled atmosphere has left a strong and easily detectable biosignature on the light that passes through it. When light bounces off of the surface of a material or passes through a gas, certain wavelengths of the light are more likely to remain trapped in the gas or material surface than others. This selective trapping of wavelengths of light is why objects are different colors. Leaves are green because chlorophyll is particularly good at absorbing light in the red and blue wavelengths. As light hits a leaf, the red and blue wavelengths are absorbed, leaving mostly green light to bounce back into your eyes. The pattern of missing light is determined by the specific composition of the material the light interacts with. Because of this, astronomers can learn something about the composition of an exoplanet's atmosphere or surface by, in essence, measuring the specific color of light that comes from a planet. This method can be used to recognize the presence of certain atmospheric gases that are associated with life, such as oxygen or methane, because these gases leave very specific signatures in light. It could also be used to detect peculiar colors on the surface of a planet. On Earth, for example, the chlorophyll and other pigments plants and algae use for photosynthesis capture specific wavelengths of light. These pigments produce characteristic colors that can be detected by using a sensitive infrared camera. If you were to see this color reflecting off the surface of a distant planet, it would potentially signify the presence of chlorophyll. The James Webb Space Telescope's science mandate is principally divided into four areas. One of these is the study of the first light and reionization of the cosmos. This refers to the early stages of the universe after the Big Bang started the universe as we know it today. In the first stages after the Big Bang, the universe was a sea of particles such as electrons, protons, and neutrons, and the light was not visible until the universe cooled enough for these particles to begin combining. Another thing that JWST will study is what happened after the first stars formed. This era is called the Epoch of Reionization because it refers to when neutral hydrogen was reionized by radiation from these first stars. Looking at galaxies is a useful way to see how matter is organized on gigantic scales, which in turn gives us hints as to how the universe evolved. 
The spiral and elliptical galaxies we see today evolved from different shapes over billions of years, and one of JWST's goals is to look back at the earliest galaxies to better understand that evolution. Scientists are also trying to figure out how we got the variety of galaxies that are visible today and the current ways that galaxies form and assemble. The telescope will also be able to study the birth of stars and protoplanetary systems. The Eagle Nebula's Pillars of Creation are some of the most famous birthplaces for stars. Stars come to be in clouds of gas, and as the stars grow, the radiation pressure they exert blows away the cocooning gas, which could be used again for other stars, if not too widely dispersed. However, it's difficult to see inside the gas. JWST's infrared eyes will be able to look at sources of heat, including stars that are being born in these cocoons. Perhaps the most exciting part of the telescope's mission is to study planets and the origins of life. The last decade has seen vast numbers of exoplanets discovered, including with NASA's planet-seeking Kepler Space Telescope. The JWST's powerful sensors will be able to peer at these planets in more depth, including, in some cases, imaging their atmospheres. Understanding the atmospheres and the formation conditions for planets could help scientists better predict if certain planets are habitable or not. The telescope is equipped with four science instruments that will enable observations in visible, near-infrared, and mid-infrared wavelengths. The first of these is the near-infrared camera. This is the telescope's primary imager that will cover the infrared wavelength range of 0.6 to 5 microns. The NIR cam will detect light from the nearest stars and galaxies in the process of formation. The population of stars in nearby galaxies, as well as young stars in the Milky Way and Kuiper Belt objects. NIR CAM is equipped with coronagraphs, instruments that allow astronomers to take pictures of very faint objects around a central bright object like stellar systems. Near CAM's coronagraph works by blocking a brighter object's light, making it possible to view the dimmer object nearby. Just like shielding the sun from your eyes with an upraised hand can allow you to focus on the view in front of you. With the coronagraphs, astronomers hope to determine the characteristics of planets orbiting nearby stars. The near-infrared spectrograph is another instrument that will operate over a wavelength range of 0.6 to 5 microns. A spectrograph is used to disperse light from an object into a spectrum. Analyzing the spectrum of an object can tell us about its physical properties, including temperature, mass, and chemical composition. The atoms and molecules in the object imprint lines on its spectrum that uniquely fingerprint each chemical element present and can reveal a wealth of information about the physical conditions of the object. Spectroscopy and spectrometry are among the sharpest tools in the shed for exploring the cosmos. Additionally, the mid-infrared instrument and the fine guidance sensor are two other instruments that help the telescope in achieving its mission. In its earliest form, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence involves the hunt for messages that other civilizations were actively broadcasting for us to pick up. But another possibility is that these civilizations create passive techno signatures that we could spot, rather like the ordinary radio, TV, and radar broadcasts that humans have been generating for a century. These, however, are much weaker. Then there is the artificial light we produce, which illuminates the night side of the planet and the possibility that advanced civilizations could build megastructures to harvest energy from the host star, and that would be visible across the galaxy. The latest focus of attention is synthetic chemicals in the atmosphere. These are byproducts from industrial processes that can only be produced by non-biological processes. One candidate is nitrogen dioxide, an exhaust gas produced by internal combustion engines in much greater quantities than non-human sources. So, an observation of nitrogen dioxide in the atmosphere of an exoplanet is a potential techno-signature, provided natural sources can be ruled out. A key part of this search is the James Webb Space Telescope. The observatory is the only known instrument in existence capable of detecting these signatures and finding alien life. The possibility of remotely detecting biosignatures has been a hot topic in recent years. In our solar system, the recent discovery of phosphine in Venus's atmosphere sparked speculation that the chemical might be created by a microbial life form. Similarly, remote sensing experts have proposed that plant life, which uses photosynthesis for energy, could be detected in infrared wavelengths. As chlorophyll absorbs visible light but shows up brightly in infrared and would give planets covered in foliage a distinct red edge. 
A single pixel photo of a distant planet just might contain enough information to tell us if biological life is there, based on the information stored in the wavelengths of light that reach the telescope lens. Latest reports from NASA suggest that the JWST may have glimpsed some of the oldest materials in the universe. According to a new, yet-to-be peer-reviewed study, researchers found an unidentified object nearly 13.5 billion light-years away. That's almost the age of the universe itself. This means the object, dubbed HD1, and which is likely a particularly distant galaxy, represents some of the most ancient stuff out there. Scientists believe that the object could reveal a lot about the formation of the early universe. However, it is too early to say exactly what the object is, how old it is, or if it even is a galaxy for sure. In fact, others say there's a chance, although small, that HD1 could be a giant black hole. Some believe that the mysterious object could be extraterrestrial. Future observations are likely to clarify those questions. Researchers hope to get images and details about HD1 from the JWST after the telescope has had the chance to collect more data. If you like this video, you may also enjoy this one, which talks about SpaceX's new Starship 2.0. Do you think humans are alone in the universe? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below.